this is called a graphing review. This is um, nothing to do in particular, Tyson, with this unit. I'm not teaching you anything about work and energy. But on the provincial exam, which no longer exists, I realize, but bear with me, they would always, on the written section, second last question was asking you to interpret some kind of a graph and do something with it. On your final exam, which is an old provincial exam that I changed the numbers for and modified, I guarantee you the second last question on the written section is going to be, here's a graph, interpret it. Uh, on some of your tests in the future, at least once or twice, you're going to be given a question where I give you a graph and I say, uh, interpret this for me. And many times in the big reviews that you're going to be getting. So what I want to teach you are some clever Mr. Do It tricks of the trades methods that you can uh, interpret graphs without having to memorize a bunch of crap. Last year in Physics 11, probably most of you memorized that the slope of a distance time graph was velocity, and the slope of a velocity time graph was acceleration. It was a waste of your time. You didn't need to memorize it. I'll show you how you could have derived it in one second. But I need to give you some background terminology first. If we have two quantities, two things, that behave in the following manner, and the first one is, if y is 0 and x is 0, it goes through 0, 0. And if x increases, y increases. So when x is getting bigger, y is getting bigger. First of all, we say that they are directly proportional to each other. Directly proportional. Am I going to ask you to regurgitate that word? No. Am I going to uh, use that word and expect you know what the heck I'm talking about? Probably. Or sometimes Alex will say, y varies directly as x. Goes through 0, 0. And when x gets bigger, y gets bigger, and it's linear in a nice straight line. That's kind of implied by this. Courtney, we write this. y, and this is the symbol for, is directly proportional to x. It's a little fish is the symbol for directly proportional to. Or if we want to turn this into an equation, we write y equals little k x. Why little k? Because traditionally that's what they've used. It stands for the word constant. I thought constant began with a c. Not in every language, only in English. I think this was from German, if I recall. Where the letter k is called the constant of proportionality. constant of proportionality. Again, Courtney, I'm going to ask you to know that word. I'm not going to ask you to give it to me. I might use that because I'm a math nerd. This sounds really complicated. It's not. You've been doing this already without knowing that you were doing this. I keep forgetting to do that, Mr. Duick. Uh... Maybe I put it here, did I? No. Note to self. Okay, I'll just do it this way. New page. And heck, let's even put some graph paper in the background. Here, graph paper. Okay. You've seen it before as follows. If I gave you this. V final is directly proportional to the time. When time gets bigger, velocity gets bigger. Don't write this down. This is just an example. This would be a graph that looks like this if that was V and that was T. And then I said to you, Alex, write the equation. Without realizing what you were doing, you would have said, oh, V final equals AT. It's vi plus at, but if we go through 0, 0, what's your initial velocity? 0. You were doing that in physics 11 without realizing, and in this case, the constant of proportionality is the acceleration. Force 
is directly proportional to the mass. Can you complete the equation? What has F and M in it? What's the actual equation? Hello, anyone? Okay, F equals MA. A is the constant of proportionality that relates force and mass. Or you could have said force is proportional to acceleration. F equals MA. M is the constant of proportionality that relates, that relates force and acceleration. You were doing it all the time without realizing it. We just didn't call it that. We called them equations. Oh, wrong one. Come on, Mr. Duke. Here's an example. The graph looks like this. It goes through 0, 0, and it's a straight line. goes through 0, 0, and it's a straight line. And there's all sorts of graphs in physics that do that. What we want to ask you, oh, and the slope of this graph is k, because this actually fits this, y equals mx plus b, but b, the y-intercept, is 0. So letter k is sitting where the letter m is. It's actually the slope of the graph. Here's where we're going to apply it, Alexis, when you're done yawning. Here's a graph, d equals vt. We're graphing distance versus time. It asks, what's the slope of this graph? How do I find the slope of any graph? I heard it here. You're right. Rise over run. Let's write that down. Rise over run. And let's assume that this is supposed to go through 10 comma 5. I think that's what I was trying to eyeball when I set this up really quickly. Alex, the rise over run for a graph that goes through 0, 0 is really easy because that's your rise and that's your run. What's the slope of this graph? What is 5 over 10 as a decimal? Now. I want to ask you, what does that mean? And this is how I figure out what the slope of a graph means. Instead of memorizing a bunch of graphs, Alex, what I do is I look at the units. What's the y-axis measured in? And that's the rise. What's the x-axis measured in? And that's a run. And what I really get is this, 0.5 meters over seconds. And what is meters over seconds a measure of? We know it's velocity. So if you memorize that last, you're fine. I never do. I can derive it in one second by looking at the units. I know that this is, hey, velocity. And Spencer, I can figure that out for almost any graph that they throw at me. I'll either divide the units or I'll divide the actual variables. Or I'll divide the actual variables. For example, If they gave me a work versus distance graph and they said, what does the slope mean? Well, what's work measured in, first of all? What is work measured in? Joules, I would write that down. Oh, sorry, you guys just watch. But I would write that down if I was doing this question. What's distance measured in? So the first thing I would say, slope is rise over run, I would say, well, it's joules per meter. Do I have memorized a unit that's joules per meter? No. Then I would, Rob, move to the variables. I would also say, well, what is the variable on the y-axis on the rise, Rob? W over. What is the variable on the x-axis, Rob? I would say, is there an equation that has W and D in it? I would go looking at my formula sheet if I didn't have it in front of me. Carissa nodded her head. Carissa, what is the equation that has W and D in it? So how could I make this look like this? I think I would divide both sides by D. You with me? Oh, you know what the slope of this graph is actually a measure of? Force. Has to be. 
Tyson, you're right. Has to be. So go ahead and memorize 80 graphs. I think there's about 80 in physics 12. I don't. You give me the slope, I will either go rise over run and divide the units and try and figure it out that way. My second resort is to go rise over run with the variables. I can figure that out almost any way you throw it at me, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Okay. Heck, you can even do ones that you've never even seen before. If I'm graphing momentum, which is symbolized by the letter P, and I'm graphing mass, which is symbolized by the letter M, can you look at your formula sheet right now, and can you tell me what the heck the slope means? I haven't done momentum with you. Well, let's see. What's the equation that has a P and an M in it? Can you read it to me, Spencer? Momentum equals mass times velocity. So if I want to go momentum divided by mass, Spencer, what did you say the slope of this is? I don't know momentum, but I can figure that out. Okay. So what do you do if it's a slope? Divide the units. Is that next door? That's not someone's phone? Oh, I was looking at it for a second there. Hungrily. Thinking about Tim Bits. Next page. Has been. If you have if you have a straight line but it doesn't go through zero zero. If y is not zero when x is zero, but when x gets bigger, y gets bigger, we say there is should be an. indirect variation. They vary indirectly. There's something else besides just the slope, a y-intercept. And we write y is proportional to kx plus b. Actually, Alex, the one that you're most familiar with is y equals mx plus b. It's good old slope-intercept form, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So probably in physics 11, you would have somewhere along the line been given a graph like this, a velocity time graph, a nice straight line. And they would have said, what's the equation? Well, to find the equation, we needed to first of all find the slope. What's the slope of this? What's the rise? Careful, don't say the rise is 6 because it's not. Okay. Now, this is one of the times in terms of bang for my buck. I almost always draw that because it takes me one second and it keeps me from making dumb mistakes. And then I can say the rise is 3 over, what's the run, Spencer? As a decimal, it's 0 0.3. 0 0.3 what? What are the units? Well, it's meters per second per second. It's rise over run. What is meters per second per second? See, so if you memorize that last year, fine. But can you see? You actually didn't need to because this is why Mr. Kamozi and myself last year emphasized to you, hey, memorize the units. Really helpful. So, and, um, all right. What is that? It's acceleration. It's the acceleration. Come on, ten. What's the y-intercept? What comma what? I'll give you a hint. Zero comma Spencer. Now, what does the y-intercept mean on this graph, though? It means something here. What is it? Yeah, Cassidy. What did we call that? Okay, you know what? I think that's VI on this graph, isn't it? Now over here, let's try writing the actual 
equation, and we're going to use our template y equals mx plus b, except I'm not going to use the letter y. What letter, what variable is sitting on the y-axis? Not a variable y. What's sitting on the y-axis? V? I agree. Equals m was the slope. What did you say the slope of this line was? 0.3? x, oh no, no, I'm not going to use the letter x. Shannon, what variable setting where the x is on my x-axis? No, that's the units. What variable? What variable? All I want is that right there. You overcome what variable? I'm going to use a T right there instead of an X. Yes, 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 yes. That would make more sense to me. Plus, keep going, Shannon. B is the Y-intercept. What was the Y-intercept as a number? Three. By the way, look up. Can you see V final equals A t plus v initial, that's actually vf equals vi plus at in disguise. That's where it comes from. There it is. Hey! It says right here. What would the area underneath this graph be? Got your attention. Now, now that you're breathing again, I said the trick for slope is divide. You know what the trick for area is? I don't know. Hey, what's the area of a rectangle? What's the equation for the area of a rectangle? Rob, what was the second word you said? No, second word you said. Second word you said. Not the first word, not the third word. The second word you said. Louder, please. Hmm. What's the area of a triangle? Does anybody know the area of a triangle? Tyson, what was the second word you said? Times. You know what the trick when you're dealing with an area, if you want to figure out what it means, you don't divide. You know what you do? Times. Here it says, hey, what would the area underneath this graph be? I'm going to take my y units and times it by my x units. Or I would take my y variable. and times it by my x variable because area is times. One of these should help me figure out what's going on. I think in this particular example, it's easier to look at the units because I'm multiplying fractions. Math 12 is how do I multiply fractions? Top times. Top, bottom times. How many s's on top, Spencer? How many s's on the bottom? How many left? And you know what, Spencer? What units are left? Okay, what's the area underneath the velocity time graph? What do you measure in meters? I'm going to be fussy. Displacement, technically, because I think it can go negative. But if you said distance, I wouldn't freak out. I don't actually have memorized. Okay, that's a fib. I do have it memorized because I've taught it so often. But I didn't try to memorize that the area under a velocity versus time graph was distance. I said, I'll just multiply the units together. Hey, here's the graph. What if I was graphing mg and h? And you got something that looked like that. And I said, what's the area underneath here? It's mgh. This time, I think it's easier not to look at the units. I think this time it's easier to look at the actual equation. And yeah, Jessica just went, well, Mr. Duick says, oh, good gosh, that's potential energy. It's potential. It's got to be. In fact, I can even give you one that you may never have seen before. Now, in theory, you've done this in science 9 or 10. But let's see. Example C. 
if when the x increases, if when x gets bigger, y decreases, y gets smaller, you get a graph that looks an awful lot like this quite often, a curvy graph. And this is where Math 12, I need to apologize to you because I believe physics has this wrong. In physics, in science in general, if when one gets bigger, the other one gets smaller, we say y varies, and they say inversely, and I'm going to go on a rant here because actually it varies Cassidy reciprocally. Inverse is when you switch the x and y around, and that's not what's happening here. This is a case where I don't think the terminology is good, but I'm stuck with what they use in science. And this is why kids get inverse and reciprocal mixed up. y equals k times 1 over x. Here's an example. I'm graphing r in ohms. This is resistance. I'm graphing i in amps. This is current. By the way, what would the area underneath this graph be? I don't know. How would I figure it out? Area means I multiply the units. I would go I times R. Can anybody look on their formula sheet and tell me what I times R is? V, which stands for not velocity, that's a lowercase v. We're in the electricity unit. What do you think it stands for? Voltage. There, you just discovered Ohm's law by using a bit of clever math. Um, sometimes you see this one, y varies as x squared. In fact, you looked at it an awful lot in Math 11. It's a good old parabola. d equals vit plus I have at squared. Oh, kinetic energy equals a half mv squared. It's a parabola. There'll be a few more that show up this year. Kinetic energy equals a half mv squared. Justin, this particular parabola has a vertex at 0, 0. Why? Because if you're not moving, how much kinetic energy do you have, Justin? Zero. This has to go through 0, 0. Uh, Justin, you may remember from Math 11, y equals a bracket x minus p all squared plus q. Remember that bad boy? So in this case, a is half m. What's the slope of this graph? Problem. You can't. Oh, who's in calculus? Okay, in calculus, you can find the slope. Are you guys starting derivatives yet? by taking a derivative, and it's not a very tough one. But uh, for the most part, you can't. What you would do instead, Alex, is you would straighten this curve out. Instead of graphing kinetic energy versus velocity, turn the page, you could straighten this graph out by graphing kinetic energy versus velocity squared. By the way, what does the slope of this graph mean? Hmm. Let's try dividing the units. That would be joules divided by meters squared per second squared. By the way, there's a typo here. There should be a 2 on... Oh, let's try that again, Mr. Duick. There should be a squared on this m right here, because v squared would be m squared over s squared. And on the previous graph, we should scribble out the squared, because velocity is meters per second, not meters per second squared. Back to my point, do you guys know what joules over meters squared per second squared is? I don't off the top of my head. So instead of trying to divide the units, I'm going to try dividing the variables. This is kinetic energy divided by v squared. Do I have an equation that has kinetic energy and v squared in it? Which equation has kinetic energy and v squared in it? Let's write that down. Ke equals a half mv squared. Now, Sabina, let's make it look like kinetic energy over v squared. What would I do with this v squared? I think I would divide, yes? 
I think what we have is this, kinetic energy over V squared, which is your slope, is, oh, you know what the slope of this is? Andrew, read this to me. Half the mass. In other words, if I'd given you numbers and said, how heavy is the object? Find the slope and double it. That's how heavy the object is. If I'd given you numbers and said, find the gravitational force on the object, which might terrify some of you. No, no, no. Find the slope, double it. There's your mass times 9.8. There's the gravitational force. All sorts of things you can start to do. Just don't panic. Relax. Slope, divide the units or divide the variables. Area times the units. Multiply the units. Multiply the variables. And in fact, that's a lovely summary. To do the slope, divide the units or the variables. To do the area, multiply the units or the variables. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that'll get you there. What about that point one? Be clever. There'll be something else that gives it away. Is that okay? Hey, Hisham, what's it say here? A week from this Thursday. What's it say? Keep reading, Hisham. We are done the unit. What's your homework? If you haven't handed in lessons one or two or three, get them in. Otherwise, it's going to be take home quiz. Work on the review before I turn you completely loose. Bear with me for a moment. 